Last week in episode 27, we chatted about what happens if you are a highly motivated homeowner and you just don't really know what to do. What options might be available to you if you are not afraid to do the work, you don't mind painting, you don't mind moving the furniture, you don't mind hanging up pictures, you just don't really know what pictures to hang up or what direction you need to take take your home into. We're continuing that conversation a little bit today, only we're flipping the scales just a little bit to talk about this perspective. It's not that you're not motivated, it is that you are just so stuck. You are stuck in inaction because you don't really see where to start. You don't see the starting line. You don't see how to move one foot in front of the other because you don't even know how to stand up. That's what we're talking about today. We're talking about four quick actionable steps you can take to move your home design needle forward in one room today, tomorrow, this weekend. We're talking about things that you can do to just kind of get yourself out of that rut if you're in one. We're not talking about going big. We're not talking about hiring the designer. We're not talking about reading all the books and looking at all the pictures. We're just taking it four little steps. Are you curious what they are? Great. Keep listening. And you might be surprised to know that one of them talks about getting naked. (laughs) do I have your attention? Yes, I'm pretty sure I do. Okay. Not you. Don't go there. Your mind is not going to go there. I'm not talking about you getting naked, weirdo. I'm talking about your room getting naked. So here we go. Let's dive into today's show (laughs) and let's talk about those four quick tips so that you can move the design needle forward in your home this weekend. Enjoy today's show. We grew up with the phrase, home is where the heart is, but our culture has shifted and now the message is, home should be Pinterest perfect. I'm calling BS on that message. Home, it's not about the stuff, it's about the story. And whether you know it or not, your home is a reflection of you and is already saying something. So what is it that you want it to say? Hey, I'm Danny, a former first grade teacher turned home decorator. Going from a dual income to a single income so I could stay home with my babies meant budget, like ramen eating, Goodwill shopping budget, and I learned a few things along the way, like how to bring big style to your home without breaking the bank, and I'm sharing it all with you. Tips, tricks, decor, and design advice so you can learn to tell your story with your style, where you can start living free from the Pinterest perfect trap and start living a life of intention. Welcome to Fig and Farm at Home where we design happy living and where it doesn't have to be perfect to be beautiful. One of the things I hear most often from clients or people who hear that I'm a home decorator and now it's a point of conversation is this idea that I just don't know where to start. I have an entire room, not even a room, I have an entire house full of rooms and I don't know where to begin. How do you know when everything needs to be done? How do you know where to start? Which wall do I paint first when I need to paint a million walls? Which couch do I replace when I need to replace what seems like a million couches? Does this sound familiar to you? This is a conversation I have on repeat and there is light at the end of the tunnel. There is hope at the end of the tunnel. And I want to tell you where I would start. Okay, so last week we talked about the room edit. That was for the person who is highly, highly motivated. They are ready to work. They just want a little direction. You are not that person. If you are raising your hand saying, I don't know where to start, that is not you yet. And that's okay. You want change to happen. You just are so overwhelmed with the idea that there's so much change that has to happen that you sit in inaction. This is for you. So I have four quick tips for how you know how to move your needle forward when you could literally be moving your needle forward in the living room, the bathroom, the dining room, the mudroom, the garage. You, you got it, right? Every single room in the house. All right, tip number one, I want you to do this. Actually, it's not even tip number one, it's bonus, but I want you to pause the episode. I want you to come over and I want you to join our Facebook group. Why do I want you to do that? Because every week I am giving you quick tips that aren't always seen on the podcast. They're not always heard on the podcast. 
I'm also doing a training in their weekly. It's more like a classroom setting where I'm specifically teaching in depth at times things that you want to learn about, things that you should know if you are trying to really love the house that you call home, to decorate your home, do it on a budget. Sometimes they are tutorials. Sometimes it is kind of the deeper theory. Sometimes it is a lookbook at pictures that we are dissecting and saying, hey, this is why this room design works. This is why it doesn't. Things like that. Anyway, go do that. Go join us. You're going to have a a richer experience if you are listening to the podcast and in the group. Okay, but really, tip number one, that was just bonus. Tip number one, I want you to think about where to start. If you are sitting in a home that you know, I could do literally the bathroom, the dining room, the bedroom, I could do any of those, but which one do I start with? I want you to think about these two things. I want you to think about which room either drives you the most crazy. Like every time you go in, you want to shut the door, scream, kick, throw some things. (laughs) Or it is the one that has the most traffic to it. Now, you know, 12 months ago, we might have not, not have had any traffic in our homes, right? We might have been kind of closed off and not inviting anyone in. So it wouldn't have mattered. But now that we're opening our homes up, we have people over Think about which one either has the most traffic, like you host the most people, whether they are big people, little people, or it drives you the most bonkers. Okay, let me give you an example. Your room might drive you bonkers if every time you walk in, you think, good grief, I hope no one sees this. Every time you walk in, you have a big sigh and think, I just hate this room. It might be that room if you walk in and you see stuff everywhere. It might be the room that you walk in and you just want to shut the door, turn around and walk away. It might be the room that should have a purpose like eating dinner, but you never eat dinner because it is, you don't enjoy being in there or it's not functional. So there are a lot of reasons why a room could drive you bonkers. Maybe it's function or maybe it's form. It doesn't really matter which one, but whatever it is that's driving you bonkers, whichever room is driving you bonkers, I do want you to think about first why it's driving you bonkers. Is it form or is it function? When you're designing that room, you will need to pinpoint how you're going to transform it functionally and how you're going to transform it formationally with the pretty part, right? So be mindful of those two things if you're choosing the room based on bonkers. <laughs> okay, the other thing that could make you want to choose a room to start is it is the room that has the most traffic. Maybe you host a group of teenage boys every week for a youth group. Maybe you host book club once a month. Maybe you are just hosting Thanksgiving and you know that your in-laws are going to come in and they're going to be sitting down after dinner lounging in your living room and it's not quite up to snuff. Maybe that's it. What room is in your home that you congregate when you have people over? And if that is one of those that is like, oh, it's just fine. It's just fine. Don't start there. But if it is on that list of I need to do every room in the house and I don't know where to start, do the one that will will propel the needle forward faster. And that is going to be one where you have a lot of eyes on it. And a lot of eyes that aren't yours. They're not your husband's. They're not your kids. They are someone who's going to be providing even some feedback because sometimes that feedback is enough to propel you forward into the next space. Okay, so tip number one, start with a room that either drives you bonkers, the most bonkers, or has the most traffic, the most people that you host in it. Okay, tip number two, once you have chosen that room, now what? Okay, great. Okay, Danny, I chose the dining room. Now what? I want you to take a peek and see if there's any piece in there that can serve as inspiration. And I want you to think about designing around that. Now, this is, of course, skipping all of those steps I teach about in Design 101. This is skipping the finding your aesthetic, finding your Um, the purpose of the room, understanding the anchor pieces and peripheral pieces. It is skipping all of that. This is just to get you into action. If you are wanting more of the 
I actually want to do it step by step by step. That 10 week program Danny talked about. Yeah, that one that I missed that opportunity of shoot, dang it. (laughs) I want to do that. Okay. Good news for you. That is coming back. It is coming back in the new year. It is also coming out as quickly as I can get it into a course that you can do on your own without me. But in the meantime, this is for you. Okay. This is for, I just want action to happen and I want to get it done. And it doesn't have to be, doesn't have to break the bank, but I just need something to move the needle forward. Okay. Here we are. Pick that inspiration piece. I want to tell you what inspiration piece I picked years ago when I redid my master bedroom. Now, this is like two master bedrooms ago, same house, but two styles ago. (laughs) When we moved here from Iowa, um, we had very, very, very taupe walls. These were the taupe walls that were in the early 2000s. And pretty much everything in our home was taupe. And I painted the walls gray. And that was pretty much it. I didn't really know what direction I was going to take my room. But I knew one thing. I knew two things, actually. I wanted it lighter and airier, and taupe did not say lighter and airier. Taupe said, um, I don't know, I'm living in the dirt because we have a brown carpet as well. So brown on the walls, brown on the carpet felt too brown. So I painted the walls gray. It has a blue undertone, which was fine. And then I knew I wanted it lighter and airier, so I brought in a white duvet. Really, that was it gray walls, white duvet, and now what? What on earth do I do with the rest of it? Well, I had an inspiration piece, and that inspiration piece, technically speaking, I should have looked at before I painted my walls gray. That's okay. But I took that inspiration piece, and it was a quilt that a dear, dear friend had made for me. And gosh, if you know quilting, you, well, first of all, if you know sewing, you know that sewing could take time. But if you know quilting, quilting is math on steroids. You are making sure that you are cutting straight lines and um, not just straight lines, but you are measuring and remeasuring and measuring until the fifth degree. (laughs) And it's a lot of work. And oh my gosh, I just am so appreciative of really any handmade gift. But this quilt took so much time, so much love, so much effort. And the best part? is that it was all my colors. It was the colors I gravitated to. And at the time she gave it to me, I actually wouldn't have said I gravitated towards these colors, but she knew she recognized very quickly that, yep, Danny is a teal girl. Danny's teal. She likes kind of the lines. Um, there was some pink in there. So cute. And not like traditional quilt, not like the warm fall colors. This was bright and fun and playful and had so much vibrancy in the quilt itself. So imagine this. Um, It has a very light blue, kind of a Tiffany blue background with white squiggly lines, which if you know me well, you know the stripes are um, a neutral to me. So I love that. It has that background. So Tiffany blue with white squiggly stripes. It is edged in lime green piping. Um, not piping, what do you call it? Bias tape. And then the colors on the quilt themselves are whites and lime greens and some different shades of kind of, um, different hues of lime green. There's some polka dots, there's some flowers, there's some pinks, there's some kind of deeper pinks, there's some teal, lighter teal. So imagine that color scape. That was my inspiration. So what did I do? My gray walls were the perfect background for some teal curtains. If you've been to Ikea, you know which which curtains I'm going to mention. These are the velvet curtains. So I brought in texture with the velvet. It was so luxurious. I brought in um, some pink accent. This is the beginning of my pink journey into my house full of boys, even boy animals. I brought in a deep, deep pink that matched one of the pink tones that was on my inspiration quilt. And then I played with some of the blues. So I brought in some um, light blues here and there with some of the textiles, the sheets. I brought in some pink sheets so that they could peek out and play off of the quilt. Lovely. That was my inspiration piece. And I honestly, it didn't take much. I had the quilt. I already painted the room. I had the duvet cover, which was white. I just needed curtains and a few pillows. 
and I transformed my space. So this is what I'm meaning by if you are not wanting to do the whole Design 101 course, you are wanting to just take action, and sometimes that action is just a teeny tiny few steps, here you go. Get that inspiration piece, and that can be helpful. Inspiration pieces can be artwork, textiles, they can be pieces of furniture. Oftentimes, though, I would choose an inspiration piece that had a little bit of complexity to it. Um, something that has some story behind it. For me and that quilt, that meant a lot. It was handmade by a girlfriend, and she handmade it specifically for me. That means so much. So having that as the backdrop of my room was a wonderful jumping off point. But maybe for you, it is an artwork that you've collected over the years. Maybe for you, maybe it is a piece of art that you got while you were um, on vacation in Europe. Or maybe it was a hand-me-down that you got from your mom who is no longer with you. Or maybe it was a rug that you purchased because, oh my gosh, you just had to have that rug. Think about the inspiration piece being your jumping off point, your diving board, if you will. Okay, tip number three. You have the room identified. It was either the room that drove you most bonkers or the room that you have the most traffic in. You have chosen an inspiration piece within the room or one even that I didn't mention, but that you want to bring from another part of your home that you can use as an inspiration piece within that room. Okay, you have that. And now what I want you to think about is removing all of the peripheral pieces down to your anchor pieces. There's nothing left in your room other than anchor pieces and your inspiration piece. Okay, quick recap. Danny, what on earth are you talking about anchor piece? What are you talking about peripheral piece? This is something I teach in depth in Design 101, but it's something I've mentioned before. An anchor piece is something within your room that is either too costly of an investment to interchange or switch out over a couple years, like a couch, a bed, a bed frame, side chairs, a table, things like that. Or it is also built in, so you can't remove it. Or if you have to remove it, if you want to remove it, you are literally taking down a wall or remodeling. A peripheral piece are all of the extras. <clears throat> the peripheral pieces are generally the things that pack the biggest punch. These are the textiles, they are the pillows, they are the lamps, they are the um, sometimes rugs. It, it really depends on the price point and your flexibility of that pricing scale. Sometimes these are side tables, maybe um, baskets, kind of the smaller pieces that really add the layers and the depth and the texture. If you remove the peripherals from your space, you are going to start basically with a blank slate. So you know which room you're in, you have the inspiration piece, and now you are down to the bare bones with your anchor pieces. Right now, from here, I want you to look to see how your anchor pieces are serving you in that room. I know, forget about that mess that you just made. You put all your peripheral pieces in the other room. <laughs> You're going to get back to that, I promise. But right now, where your anchor pieces sit, I want you to ask yourself this question. Do you have too many pieces of furniture in that room? It will be blaringly obvious, or it should be. If you have to walk around um, your anchor pieces to kind of find your way to another anchor piece or another section of the room, you might have too much stuff, right? You might have too many pieces of furniture, or maybe the pieces of furniture are a little bit too big. Can you either rearrange or put one of those pieces of furniture in another room? Maybe lend that piece of furniture to someone else until you know if you need it back or not, or eliminate it altogether. That's the starting point. Once you have your anchor pieces back in your space the way that you want it, then you can start bringing in some of the layering, some of the peripherals that will layer and add depth and character and nuance to your space. And those are all going to be centered kind of around your inspiration piece. So as you're looking at that inspiration piece, you're looking at the colors, the textures, all of the things that kind of make that piece your inspiration. Why is it that you like it in the first place? Do you have reds and golds that you might not have had in your room in the, before, but you want to bring in reds and golds that will kind of stand out now? 
think about opportunities for doing that. We talk about adding layers and depth and texture and height and repetition. So if your inspiration piece has the red and the golds and you're wanting to have red curtains and gold accents, awesome. Just make sure that these things are repeated within your room so that it makes sense, so that you're not putting your room back together and now you have a bully there. Okay, the last thing I want you to think about is making sure you start with a plan. We already kind of did that with clearing our room and having the inspiration piece. We know that whatever it is that is our inspiration is the start of our plan. I want you to also remember that this is the fast track design. This is the, <clears throat> I need to get out of indecision, out of stuckness and into action. So this is kind of a, a quick hit, a super speedy way to just get started. And your plan up to this point are really these three steps, starting with a room, getting an inspiration piece, and checking out what your room looks like with nothing in it. That's really a great place to start. From here, here is where we can go one of two ways. And I want to make sure that you go the right way. One way is you can get so excited that you go to the store and you buy all the things that you see. You end up wasting money because you're when you get at home, you don't know how to use it. And you're kind of stuck in the same spot that you were two months ago. The other way you can go is you can kind of settle into what you have happening right now. You've put the peripheral stuff away, you put it aside, you're not tripping over it in another room, but you are allowing yourself to take notice of how the room is working for you. You're really kind of studying, you're becoming a student of that inspiration piece so that you can see what are the elements that you want to bring in? What are the things that you want to bring to complement and to um, really help show off that inspiration piece? If your inspiration piece is that red and gold like we alluded to earlier, how are you going to bring that in? Does your pink rug make sense anymore? Probably not. So you're kind of taking some time here. You're taking some pause. And maybe tip number four shouldn't be plan. Maybe it should be pause. Maybe that's more like the word that we should use. You're, you're pausing in order to take a minute to take it all in so that you can think clearly about the direction you're going to go so that you can be intentional about where your money goes from here. Now, if you get to this point and you get stuck, call me. You have my number. It's in my email. It's on my website. Call me and let's talk about it. Because you might realize at this point, you actually do need Design 101. You actually do want to go back and make sure that this room is great. You're going to get it ready for Thanksgiving, but you actually want to make sure that it seem, that it flows seamlessly with the dining room and the front hallway and the living room that you walk past. You might get to that point. So do me a favor, pick up that phone, schedule that appointment, and let's chat. All right, girls, that was my four quick tips for how you can get out of that place of really just feeling stuck, like you are never going to make any headway and you're not going to be able to afford the Design 101 class or the designer, and you just really want to know just kind of where to start and where to start quickly and how to make it happen even before Thanksgiving. It doesn't have to be big. It just needs to be action. So recap, here we go. Tip number one, pick a room. Pick a room. Easy as that. Tip number two, find an inspiration piece that you want to design your room around. Think about the colors that are in it. Be, become a student of that inspiration piece. Tip number three, clear everything except for the anchor pieces. Put it aside. Don't get rid of it yet. Just put it aside and sit in a naked room for a little while. Tip number four, have a little patience. Keep studying that inspiration piece and slowly and steadily start thinking about bringing in things that you have, peripheral pieces, in order to accentuate and complement the inspiration piece. And hopefully you'll be able to do that by finding things in your home and without shopping. All right, girls, if you need any help, you know where to find me. Reach out, 
figandfarmathome at gmail.com or pop onto my website, figandfarmathome.com and book a call. Girls, I believe in you. You can make change happen. And here's to you for just getting started. See you next time. Hey, real quick before you go, if you learned something new or found value in today's podcast, would you head over to iTunes to Fig and Farm at Home and leave a review and subscribe to the show? That would be awesome. And if you'd like to connect with my community of mamas who are learning to be intentional storytellers within their own homes, join us at bit.ly forward slash design 101 group. There's always more room at the table. See you soon.